The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 124 of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Hey, I've got another exciting return guest this week with the international best-selling author of the Blue Hillock series. That's right, Catherine Hudson is back. Hey, stay tuned as that conversation is coming up in just a minute, but you don't want to skip ahead. Trust me, because I've, I've got a very exciting brand new feature that I want to share with you. But first, hey, this show is available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube, so make sure that you're subscribed on your podcast player of choice, and perhaps even leave me a rating, especially if you are listening on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or iHeartRadio, as those seem to be the most popular ones, and make sure to share your favorite episodes with your friends, so that way you get word about these amazing authors. Don't forget to also follow the show on social media. We are currently on Facebook and Twitter as the Sample Chapter Podcast, very, very easy to find. And follow us there. If you're following us on Twitter, I'm going to make sure to follow you back. If social media is not your thing, you can email me at the sample chapter podcast at gmail.com. Drop me a line. Let me know what's on your mind and what you're thinking. If you got maybe a, if you got somebody you want to recommend, if maybe you are an author yourself, then let me know. And finally, the brand new feature I was telling you about, you can now call or text. <laughs> I, I'm pretty excited about this. This is something I had never expected to be doing with the show. But, uh, you know, I, I looked into it a little bit after some some goading along from some other podcast friends and decided, you know what, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. So, yeah, we've got the phone number set up. It is 660-851-1146. And you can call that number. It'll go right to our voicemail that's set up and waiting for you. I will get that message uh, later on, and then I can get back with you. I probably won't call you back. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) I won't be calling you back. But you can leave me a message about an episode that you really enjoyed, or uh, I don't know, whatever you'd like to say. Just uh, leave me a message. You can also text me at that number, uh, which I did not know was going to be a thing. So that's pretty cool. And uh, you know what? And it does all work. I've already tested it all out. And uh, this is this is exciting. I can't wait to hear from all you fans listening all over the world. This is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So drop me a line. Once again, that number is six six zero eight five one 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 four six. Well, happy Father's Day to all you other fathers and grandfathers out there around the world. I hope your day was fun and exciting like mine was. You know, I basically did nothing on Father's Day. I got up. I sat down, I did a little bit of reading. I was going to do some writing. I, I really intended to do some writing, but I didn't. I ended up doing some reading. And then I sat down and, you know, I, I watched uh, I watched a bunch of movies all day. I just kind of relaxed. My family made coffee for me and had a nice breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner. One of my favorite things, I'm wearing it right now. I may have to see if I can get a picture of this sometime. My uh, One of my daughters. Got me a podcast T-shirt says "On the Air," which uh, that's pretty awesome. I really like it, and I'll have to share that with you sometime. And as a uh, as somebody who is a movie fan, like I said, I watch movies all day. My wife also she knows how much of a fan of popcorn I am, and I got one of those really cool uh, whirly pop poppers. So it's got the handle with the crank in it, so that way it's just like movie theater popcorn. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I've already made a big batch out of it once so far, so I can't wait to, uh, I, I'm probably going to end up making popcorn every night. That'll just be my dinner from now on. What do you think? That's that's healthy, right? That's good for a grandpa. Just eat popcorn every night. <laughs> that's what my dad does, <laughs> basically. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but, uh, you know, uh, but I, I said that I did mostly just reading on, on uh, Sunday that morning. And no writing, but on Saturday I, I did do some writing and got back in. I did a little bit of free writing in the Bandit Chronicles again. Finished out another chapter, so that was fun. And I did a little bit of editing in Novel Idea. 
You know, something else that was really exciting was I had I had inspiration strike me here in the last couple of days where I had an idea for a new story. And, you know, it was one of those things where at first it was just the kernel of an idea, speaking of popcorn, and it slowly started to pop just the ideas, the links, how this was going to take effect and how that would affect this. It just kept on popping until I got to the point where I realized, oh my gosh, I got to, I got to start writing this down. And it was like the ideas were just coming as fast as I could put them down. And I have, I don't have a full outline. I, cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to go into it too much, but I do have a basic outline along with some character background on a couple of them. And, uh, so it's, it's exciting. This is a, this may be my, we'll see how it goes, uh, whenever I go to write it, but this could be my next book after I finish the Bannett Chronicles, the first three books in the, ba the Bannett Chronicles. Uh, we'll see what happens. I have plans for a, a different book, but it's possible I may work on this instead because, you know, it's this new shiny thing. It's right there in, on me right now, fresh in my mind. So we'll see what happens. And it's a, it's a werewolf book. Uh, so that was, <laughs> I've always wanted to write a werewolf book, and I've got lots of ideas for one. But, uh, yeah, that's what this one is. It, it's, it, and I'm, I'm excited to write it. This will be, this going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. All right, well, let's go ahead and thank our sponsors and friends so we can get on over that interview. Uh, starting with Scrivener, the number one writing software in the world. Every time I open up my devices to begin writing, I use Scrivener to do that. I've got my outline for that new story there on Scrivener and uh, gave it a, a basic name for now. Hey, check out this advertisement for some of the other features available on Scrivener and for how you can save 20% on the regular desktop version. Jason here. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my favorite writing tool, Scrivener. Now, I know you've heard about Scrivener because their writing software has been embraced by hundreds of thousands of other writers like you and I, from the novice to best-selling novelists. The reason we all use it is because of Scrivener's core concept to bring all the writing tools you use together in a single application. And with tools like automatic backup, character maps, project goals, and let's not forget that amazing corkboard, you can see why I use Scrivener every day. As a bonus for Sample Chapter Podcast listeners, use code CHAPTER for 20% off your desktop version. Scrivener Writing Software, built by writers for writers. Yes, indeed. Scrivener for the win. <laughs> if you happen to live in Missouri like I do, and you are in the Warrensburg area, don't forget to check out U Store All for your self-storage needs. They have two facilities, both of them fully fenced in, gated access, more than 60 cameras according to 24 hours a day, climate control and non-climate control. If you have a need for it, then they have got a unit for you. Check them out online at ustoral.net. That is the letter U-S-T-O-R-A-L-L dot net. Click the link in the show notes for our friends at Pop Goes the Culture. They've got some exciting new shows uh, over there. It's all nerd and, and geek-related kind of stuff, uh, you know, pop culture sort of stuff. And, you know, <laughs> and I say it's nerd-related and geek-related, uh, which sounds derogatory, but that's not the way it's intended because, well, for instance, one of their shows is called The Amazing Nerd Show. <laughs> and there's The Way Awesome Show, which is a, a brand new one. Uh, they also have Fanatics and the Fan and The Multiverse Tonight, so... You see where I'm getting at, and those are just a couple of examples of what's available over at popgoesculture.com. Click the link in the show notes so that you can get on over to the website and see what else they have to offer. And, of course, my other podcast network that we are now a part of, Project Entertainment Network, with more than 30, I think it's now 35, different shows on the network, a variety of wide variety of shows available to you there, including a brand new one that you are about to hear an advertisement for. Check this out. What if a storytelling podcast could be an interactive experience? 
Hi, I'm Mariah Powell, amateur author and creator of Hobbies Include Writing, and I'm openly inviting your opinions on stories I haven't finished writing yet. Launching with my original audio novel, Blood That Binds, visit hobbiesinclude-writing.weebly.com for more about the show and look for it on a podcasting platform near you. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty cool to me. And um, actually, I've already checked out a couple of episodes. So that's that's a really neat show. So check that out by clicking the links in the show notes so that you can find out more about all the shows on Project Entertainment Network. So last time Catherine Hudson was a guest on the show, it was episode 83. About a year ago, she came over and she talked about Sleepwater Beat her very first book in the Blue Helix series, which then took off for her, became an international bestseller, and uh, has been a a real great boon to her writing career. She's really excited about this, and I can't blame her. Uh, Today, she's back and talking about the next book in the series, Sleepwater Static, uh, which came out in May, and within 24 hours was another international bestseller for her. So... Oh my gosh, so many props and congratulations to her on that. We have <laughs> we have a lot of fun. Uh, every time I talk with her, she is so much fun. She you know, she is fun. She's adorable. She is a ball of energy who I just I just love talking with her. And I, I'm so excited for everything she has, everything she offers with her dystopian sci-fi. Uh, we are going to be talking today about the risks of writing in dystopian and how, how uh, you know, sometimes it kind of seems like what you've written may be happening today uh, as, as we are uh, looking into that a little bit. We also talk about unintended characters and how they can surprise us. And there's so much more, just so much more and a lot of laughs. So stay tuned. That's coming up to you right after this. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Sample Chapter Podcast. Oh, my goodness. Have I got a treat for you. <laughs> I've got the, let's see if I can say this correctly, as I, I know she got a kick out of it last time. It's the exuberantly peppy author, Catherine Hudson, has returned. She was with us back on episode 83. <laughs> back on episode 83, and now she is back. Catherine is the international best-selling author who has been writing dark fantasy, sci-fi, and LGBTQ speculative fiction since 2000. With her wildly messed up heroes, excruciating circumstances, impossible decisions, and happily never afters, she's a firm believer in piling on the intense action, showing a little character skin, and never skimping on violent means to bloody ends. Catherine, welcome back. Thank you, Jason. You did it again with the exuberantly <laughs> peppy part. <laughs> I'd forgotten all about it. I'd pushed that into the dark corner of my mind. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> oh, was good. I'm so happy to have you back here. It was such a fun interview. I was, I had so much fun uh, doing the edits on that, and that is, I have no idea where that word came from. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like I don't want to just call her peppy because that just sounds, <laughs> that just sounds silly of me, and I sound old. <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh, but exuberantly peppy. That's great. Yeah. Oh, that's... Check it out. <laughs> Thanks. I'm flattered, I suppose. <laughs> I'll it, try to live up to it. <laughs> it was meant with the great, the, the biggest of hearts. I know it was. I know, <laughs> I know it was. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Just, uh, just floating along. How about you? <laughs> Just, I'm just, uh, I'm getting along, <laughs> I guess would be the Excellent. best way to put it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Staying busy, staying busy. <laughs> That's so, good. You and the family, you guys, you all are doing well and staying healthy then? We are. We're doing, we're doing very well. We've been super fortunate in that regard and pretty much all around. And we're, we're getting ready for another cross country move. And, oh, uh, yeah, in about two weeks. <laughs> so, in two weeks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Uh, heading back home to Colorado where I am from. All my family's there. It'll be a fun time. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I lived in Colorado Springs for about five years. So 
Hey, where are nice. you going? Well, uh, the Colorado Springs is actually where I met my husband, but uh, we <laughs> are moving to Arvada now. Okay. So we'll be quite a bit farther north, but uh, I've I've lived all over the state, so none of it's new to me. <laughs> 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 we'll have fun. We'll have fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's a great place to live. It, it, we were we were on the fence of whether or not we were going to go back to Colorado when when my wife got her final retirement out of the military, and we were we were in Japan like juggling those those names. We're like, okay, back to Missouri or go to Colorado. What do we like better? Let's see here. We decided on Missouri because that's where the family was, and we mm-hmm. settled like a couple hours away. So we're we're still in you know driving distance, but not so far away that we can't go home for a quick weekend visit or something like that. Right, right. And that's that's nice. I've got uh, I've got four siblings, and three of them are in Colorado in the area, um, and my other brother's in the military too, so he's all over. But um, yeah, all all of my siblings are well. Most of them are married and have kids, but they've all got their, you know, their own lives there. And my dad's one of five kids too, and all of his siblings, all of his siblings live around the area. So it's going back to a big giant family. And uh, our three-year-old's gonna love it. She's gonna finally be around so many people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. Well, it, it worked out well for us. I think the kids had a really great time growing up around cousins. And- getting to hang out so that that'll be fun for your kids too i'm sure yeah yeah it's it's important i never thought i would actually say this you know in my younger days and i was like <laughs> never having kids never getting married it's whatever i'll live where i want but now like <laughs> I've, I've seen the error of my ways <laughs> it's amazing what happens to us as we as we start to age i know i know <laughs> won't be long you'll be in my shoes and talking about oh the grandkids are you know stomping around upstairs and... <laughs> yeah i was surprised about that i didn't i didn't know that you had grandkids <laughs> oh gosh yes I, I have five wow yep <laughs> well done <laughs> <laughs> It was, uh, yes, it was fun getting to this point. So, yeah. I'm sure it was. <laughs> you made it, right? Now we made it. We good. made it. You're That's in the clear. Right. That's right. The kids survived, and now we've, we've got more. Well, all right. You know what? We're getting way off topic here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a catch-up. Oh, my goodness. Chatting away. Oh, my goodness. How, how are it? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> I'm so happy I go back and edit. <laughs> no, there you go. Tell us about Blue Helix. How is uh, how are things going with uh, the Sleepwater Beat and now Sleepwater Static? Oh, so incredibly wonderful. Uh, so I, I just released Sleepwater Static, which is uh, book two in the Blue Helix series of the LGBTQ dystopian sci-fi. And that came out on May 26th. Uh, so it's, it's still very recent, still very new. Um, I was actually thrilled this book became an international bestseller in the first 24 hours after its release. And that was, um, yeah, that, that was a really incredible feeling. Um, and you know, Sleepwater Beat was an international bestseller as well. And it it took a little while after, after that book release, but this one was immediate. And so I, I figured I must be doing something right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and, uh, it, it came out, it came out at a very, interesting time uh in in this country and um you know the, the week that this book released was um the the week that all the George Floyd protests started and um this is a book that I very intentionally when I started writing it last year was writing to address race and racism and um it was a weird a weird congruity there um and really interesting to see again, you know, after <laughs> I wrote Sleepwater Beat, uh, finished it right before the 2016 presidential elections in the U.S. And um, a lot of things ended up paralleling with that first book. And and then with Sleepwater Static now, too, and um, <laughs> everything <laughs> came together. And, you know, I mean, that's the risk that uh we dystopian authors take right yeah. <laughs> we're writing about about dystopia and it was a it was a really interesting experience for me and i am so grateful uh 
to be able to have added added to the discussion in some ways that feel particularly poignant right now. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, I mean, I, either you just got your finger on the pulse, um, <laughs> and and you, you kind of have this sense of of um, you know the public, or you're sitting at home with a crystal ball and not telling us the the real story here you know and maybe you're seeing what's going on in the future and we're going to, have to get some powerball numbers from your pretty soon uh, don't, don't <laughs> give me too much credit man oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh i, I said i mean the, these books are set in 2030 2031 that's not that far away either i thought it would be farther away <laughs> it feels like it is <laughs> But, you know, I promise I don't have any any secret hidden powers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I don't know how much details you want to go into. Like, uh, where does static pick up after after the beat? Oh, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so at the the last chapter of Sleepwater Beat is sort of a. Uh, removed from the timeline and Sleepwater Static falls in between the second to last chapter and very last chapter of Sleepwater Beat, uh, which was an interesting way to do it. But I, I decided that I wanted to pick up the storyline um, in a bit of a different place and take it in a different direction. So uh, at the end of Sleepwater Beat, we see, you know, um, Leo, splitting off from the rest of the group and she uh, finds what Carl left for her. I won't give away any spoilers there. Um, and, and she's able to kind of come into her own in Wyoming where she ends up settling down a little bit. And, um, and then it was always my intention when I realized that the Blue Helix series was actually going to be a series that uh, each subsequent book, would be written uh, from the point of view of a different main character. And that main character would be <laughs> drawn from the pool of supporting characters from within the previous book. So um, Sleepwater Static opens up six months after uh, Leo split away from the group. And it follows the rest of that small little Sleepwater chapter that she had been a part of and uh, that she'd made her family. And the main character of Sleepwater Static is Bernadette Manny, um, 71-year-old woman <laughs> <laughs> with arthritis and um, a crazy, crazy, unexpected past that she is forced to confront. And she's leading the rest of these people at the the supernatural ability to spin a beat and uh, create physical responses with their words. And um, she's trying to take them to safety. One of their, one of their party is pregnant and about to explode with the baby. So they have to lay low somewhere um, as they're being chased by <laughs> the government and uh, certain, you know, secret organizations and, uh, then eventually, you know, their own, their own fellow American citizens, um, and Bernadette takes the group back to their past, to, to her past, to, um, there's this cabin in Hollywood, South Carolina, where she spent summers with her family as a kid, and it just kind of unearths a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of things that she spent 20 years running from, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that's where it picks up. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, I know with like book one, you get Sleepwater B, and you, you gave us an introduction to a lot of colorful characters, and then you're continuing that story with, with their stories in uh, Sleepwater Static. Where do these characters come from? I mean, where where does it where does it cross your mind that your main character will be a 71 year old woman? Uh, doing the, you know, the things that she does. Yeah. Um, you know, that, I can't exactly answer that 100%. Um, because I just, honestly, the way I picked Bernadette as a, the next main character is because I just 
loved her so much mm. um, when I was writing her in Sleepwater Beat. And so, you know, Leo in Sleepwater Beat, his main character, was very much a, a reflection of myself and so much of my personal life. Um, and so that was, you know, I was aware of it. It was intentional sometimes and not intentional other times, but it, just, <laughs> it, it fit her and it fit the story. And and then I was just fascinated by Bernadette. You know, she's this this matriarchal figure in a group of, you know, <laughs> super powered rebels, I guess, who are being hunted by this, so many different people and used as genetic weapons. And um, and her <laughs> Her beat, the ability that she has when she tells stories, is that she, she basically gets gets people really uh, sexually excited just by <laughs> telling some stories. So, and it's you know like um, tailored to each person who hears her. So, um, combining that with a seventy one year old woman was like a very strange dichotomy that really fascinated me and and then she was just you know she was badass in sleep water beat she got she got attacked and hit on the head and ended up driving her jeep into a ditch and was just sitting there smoking a cigarette waiting for <laughs> either someone <laughs> to show up and help her out or for her to just die <laughs> like oh my gosh you know she's just she's level-headed and she's cool and calm and but also like a serious mother figure as well in a, in a weird kind of rough around the edges way. And I really wanted to explore how she got there and, um, how she, how she ended up dealing with, ah, no spoilers again. (laughs) (laughs) That's dealing with some some difficult things that they, they had to face in in the first book. Yeah. Well, that, that's fascinating. So, and it makes me wonder then, so was she, was she an intentional character, or was it, or was she kind of a side character that grew from book one? Yeah, absolutely a side character that grew from book one. When I wrote Sleepwater Beat, I thought it was a one-off. Um, I was mm. fully convinced that it was just a standalone by itself, and that was it, and that was the story. Um, and then I sat with it for a little bit after it uh, after it released, and and then it started, you know, getting a lot of attention, <laughs> and um, then I got I got invited to some book clubs and readers groups to talk about it, and had a lot of really eye opening discussions, and realized like, oh, okay, no, I'm not done. The story's not done. <laughs> the characters have more. I need to I need to explore things that I didn't necessarily explore in the first book, and I need to keep this going. So, um. Then just Bernadette stood out to me as <laughs> the perfect <laughs> character to move this forward. It just all fell into place, <laughs> and I was very surprised by how easy it was for me to write a seventy-one-year-old woman. Um, <laughs> not sure what that says about me, but you know, it also it, it, it book two follows the same structure as book one, so we get to see um, you know glimpses of her past when she was younger and you know, nineteen and. 25, 30, 36. Um, and so, you know, I kind of get to dive into her as a person when she was younger, which I may or may not <laughs> relate to more easily. <laughs> um, but it was fun. It was, it was fun. And, and there's, you know, we don't see a lot of older main characters yeah. like that, you know, especially, you know, main characters who are, who are, mothers and absent mothers and uh absent relationships and um she's kind of badass beat that is kind of creepy and like real off-putting in a lot of ways and (laughs) it was fun it was really fun to play with all those all those contrasts and that's what i love i I love flipping (laughs) everything upside down (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, that that's incredible, and and it's really a, a wonderful aspect of the uh, of the book. To I, you know, I think as a reader, it, it's something that you open up and you don't realize, like, oh wow, this is going to be my main character, and mm-hmm. that it, it it I think it takes you not really like out of the story, but it gives you it gives the reader that uh, something different to hang on to. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, well, let's see where this is going. 
uh, you know, it, it, it's not like a jarring thing. It's just like, yeah, I'm 71. Follow me. Here we go. It's, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, no, here's this character from before. You know her. You love her. Hey, follow along now. Let's see where she goes with this. And that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. That's what I was hoping to do. And I actually, <laughs> there there were actually a handful of uh, of uh, advanced readers this time around who picked up Sleepwater Static uh, without ever having read book one first. And they said they absolutely loved Sleepwater Static. And then they went back to read Sleepwater Beat, too. <laughs> which, uh, so that was also, you know, intentional on my part. I, I wanted to and I want to continue to write the books in these series as, you know, they can be picked up and read in any order like this. So it was a nice test. I think I passed the test in doing that. <laughs> um, the, the, the end of, of Sleepwater Static does have a bit more of a cliffhanger than Sleepwater Beat ever did. But oh. yeah, I know. I know. It's the middle <laughs> child, you know, like at yeah. least. So. <laughs> Well, that but, that leads into my next question, which was how many how many more sequels are we going to have? Well, there would definitely be one more book for sure, for sure. Um, and I have no idea beyond that, so I'm just going to have to see <laughs> <laughs> what happens with the story after this third book. But I I have already uh, decided on the main character for the third book, and uh, I am really really excited to dive into this character it's gonna be fantastic i think i think i think a lot of readers and a lot of fans of sleepwater beat will be super interested in this one too so oh fantastic exciting yeah oh my gosh <clears throat> all right well i'm gonna put you on the spot then when can we expect uh book three Hoo i'll take a stab in the dark and <laughs> i'm t i'm trying to be to be ready with book three um, by May of 2021. So I, I am going to be releasing a, a new insanely, insanely dark LGBTQ fantasy uh, first in another series um, at the end of this fall, if everything oh. goes well. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then uh, Blue Helix book three. Crossing my fingers, knock on wood, around May next year. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, tell us about the new series that's coming out. What What is this? Oh, this is uh, the Vessel Broken series, and it is it's a, in the same world as my Unclaimed trilogy, and, and that's much less dark. Um, then most of what I write, the unclaimed is just, it, it's still dark, but it's a bit of a lighter, easier read. Um, and, uh, the Vessel Broken series book one is in lock fractured and it, um, picks up, it, it starts at about like the, the climactic moment at the end of the third book in the unclaimed trilogy. Um, when, everything falls apart <laughs> and, and we get to see, we get to see, uh, the leader of a, of a hidden order of, of occult priests, I suppose, um, in the, in the middle of a ritual when, when the whole world explodes and um it's really fantastic because in the unclaimed trilogy the uh the priests of Imlock are mentioned maybe twice in all three books just as like you know part of world world building and history and uh i got really excited about them and i said okay i'm gonna write i'm gonna write something really dark uh from <laughs> these people's perspective and it is just it is just so much fun the first it's not really a spoiler if I just say the first chapter opens up and everyone dies except for the main character. <laughs> so, like, but I promise it's worth continuing the read. It's really, really great. <laughs> if, you, if you like that kind of thing. If you like, you know, death and destruction and, and blood and fire and ruin everywhere, it's fantastic. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I really, I am excited about that. It's a, a much different voice than I've ever used before. And, um, 
And it's just, it's going full on dark. Like I'm just diving into just stuff that I know is going to turn some people away, but I'm okay with that because this is, you know, uh, a fun thing, fun thing for me that I like to do. And I'm also, I'm also working on a new, um, dark urban fantasy series. And, and that one is, uh, it, it's become a mix of what I have learned so far through my career in, in ghostwriting, mostly urban fantasy actually these days and, um, and mixing it with my brand and, and the, the fun kind of topics that I like and it's kind of a, kind of a murder mystery, kind of a, uh, I don't know, <laughs> secret dual universe world with, uh, urban fantasy and, and a lot of snark and a lot of weird, goofy things. And uh, <laughs> it's fun. I'm branching out in some different directions. So, you know, I, I like to see how how people react to that. And I like I like the diversity in that. I like the change. It keeps me from getting bored. I don't know if I could ever get bored <laughs> with my own stories and my own <laughs> characters. But, you know, I, I can't listen to the same album of music all the way through. Um at once i have to always be listening to something different so it helps <laughs> that i get to break it up <laughs> yeah i i have a feeling that it doesn't it's not going to matter what uh series or genre or where you're going i think that same uh you know excuse me but exuberantly peppy Catherine hudson is going to come through that that same voice is going to come through no matter what and i think fans are going to just dive in and and love everything that you're putting out because it sounds like no matter what it is, whether it's blood and guts and flame or love or whatever, <laughs> it's still Catherine sitting in the middle jumping up. Hey, hey, check this out. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm always gonna do that. I'm always gonna like <laughs> pop up and throw some horns and be like, "Hey, you guys are gonna love this." But I don't know if I can call that exuberant, like happy. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe not. No. <laughs> then I would go. I. I would hope that exuberantly peppy doesn't come out in my writing. Cause that's not, <laughs> that's not <laughs> what I'm aiming for. But no, I have, I, I was, I was a little curious at first when I started, you know, I still haven't officially like announced anything huge about the Serpent Fantasy series, but, um, you know, I, I have let some of my, uh, more avid readers uh, who, you know, <laughs> the ones who respond to every single newsletter that I put out, like, <laughs> with awesome things. But, like, I, I love you guys. You are the reason why I do this. So I've let, I've let them in on, on the secret. I'm like, hey, you know, if this may not be a genre that you're into. I know it's urban fantasy. I'm kind of branching out a little bit. And I've had uh, quite a few people tell me, um, I will read absolutely anything you write. So bring it. There you <laughs> go. Love <laughs> that's fantastic that is uh makes my day so yes, yes i hope yes. you're right jason i hope you're right <laughs> <laughs> well there and there and there you go fans you just heard it right there the best thing you can do to find out more about Catherine is go to her website sign up for the newsletter and read everything that she's got and respond well so that way she'll give you some secrets that you should sorry what was that i Oh, <laughs> totally cut out. I'm sorry. My phone did something so weird. <laughs> I, I said that what, what everybody needs to do, everybody that's listening, if they want to find out more, they need to get over to your website, sign up for your newsletter, read everything that you've got and respond to every, to every newsletter that you've got so they can hopefully get uh, that epic fan service and, and get some little secrets from Catherine. That is right. My my readers who respond to all my emails get some pretty amazing perks, and that's just because it makes me feel special. <laughs> <laughs> well, where can uh, where can we find and follow you so that way they can get in on that? Yeah, you talked about my website. That is KatherineHudsonFiction.com. Uh, and I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Catherine Hudson Fiction and Twitter as Exquisitely Dark. Um, and my books can be found across the board where good books are sold. Amazon, Apple Books, Barnes Noble Kobo, a lot of others. Um, that's where you will find me. Outstanding. Catherine, you are a delight 
to speak to. Thank you. I won't, I won't call you the other name anymore. I will, <laughs> I will just talk about what a delight you are to talk to. And I, I just love this so much. I love having you back on here and good grief. I, I wish you all the best. I, you're going to do well. I'm just happy to know you. Oh, thank you, Jason. I was so excited and am so excited to be back. It's always a good time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that means it's time for me to step aside, hand the floor over to our wonderful guest, Catherine Hudson, with her latest book, Sleepwater Static. All right. This comes from Chapter 14 of Sleepwater Static. Can't believe we're doing this. Daryl shut the driver's side door of his Monte Carlo and stuck his hands in his pockets. He took in the side of the upper middle class neighborhood in Vincent, Alabama with the same careful, calculated consideration with which he studied everything else he didn't know inside and out. Bernadette smirked and stepped up onto the sidewalk, her moccasin shoes crunching across a few scattered pieces of mulch from the landscaped yard. See? The drive wasn't all that bad. Yeah, you could just keep driving and driving forever, couldn't you? He walked around the front of the car and joined her on the sidewalk. Wouldn't surprise me if you just kept driving on without me, be. She feigned insult and let her jaw drop, then laughed and hooked her arm through his. Those hands never left his pockets. I would never do that. What's the point of going wherever without you? Daryl shrugged a little as they moved up the sidewalk beside the long line of cars parked at the curb. Just to go, I bet. When he cocked his head and turned it just a little toward her, they shared a subdued laugh. Well, as long as you keep making drives like this with me, I won't have to go driving off by myself. And you're going to freak when you see what these people are up to. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to forget about. They passed the first house at least three times the size of their Charleston apartment, and he cleared his throat. You sure I'm even supposed to come to one of these things, B? I ain't working with the same kind of words as y'all. If they're trying to keep it low, how's somebody like me going to fit into a shape I ain't got? Bernadette's eyes widened, and she looked up at him. The man stared straight ahead, pursing his lips a little. Hey. When she tugged on his arm, he sniffed and turned his head, his gaze lingering down the street as if he were only halfway listening to her. She knew he just didn't want her to see in his eyes what they'd already both heard in his voice. Then he met her gaze with a raised eyebrow, which had always failed at passing off as indifference. At least with her. You coming here with me is just like me walking down the street with you to Benny's for a cookout. Are you going to try telling me I didn't belong there How many times we've gone? Nah, that ain't the same. Bernadette tried to hold back her laughter and managed to squish it down into a quick exhale through her nose. Then go ahead and tell me how it's different. Those boys love you, B. So do their wives and little Jackson. Monique? Uh-huh. Yeah, everybody loves you. Daryl snorted and rolled his eyes back toward the end of the block, searching for something neither one of them understood. But it's different is all. How? See, now you're pushing. She did laugh this time. I'm not pushing. Now, don't go. I'm not pushing. Grinning up at him, Bernadette grabbed his bare arm beneath the t-shirt sleeve with both hands, one of her elbows still linked through his. But if you want me to understand what you're trying to say, you have to actually say something. An indignant sigh puffed through his loose lips, and his dark brown eyes swept across the street from one house bordering on intimidatingly large to the next. We just chill at Benny's. We're chilling here, too. No, I mean where a brother can bring his woman and hang and not give a shit about what anyone else is trying to do. Bernadette raised her eyebrows and nodded though she knew they hadn't gotten to the heart of what made his whole body cringe on the sidewalk. Daryl hardly showed any of that discomfort just looking at him, but she could feel the tension in the flexed muscles and twisted sinews of his bicep beneath her hands. This isn't one of those kind of parties. No one's trying to do anything. They wouldn't have invited us, both of us, if there was something else going on. See, and then that just means it's for show, don't it? Y'all sit around and talk, like you do, and all those people get to see what you can do and everyone else. How am I going to be in all that? Just stand in the back like someone's paying me to wait there while y'all take y'all sweet time with the rest? I got no business showing up here, B. You think you're too different for anyone to want you in that house? 
Bernadette nodded toward the next house over, with the white siding and the navy blue shutters and trim. Daryl just jerked his eyebrows up and pressed his lips together so tightly they all but disappeared. Okay, go ahead and tell me I didn't have any business sitting in a chair on Benny's back porch. That's not. Fine, I'll make it easier. Bernadette slid a hand up his arm and pressed herself against him, craning her neck to look up at him despite the fact that he was busy staring at nothing down the street again. If you can tell me that a white girl who left everything to be with you, without a second thought, doesn't belong in a cookout with no other white faces, then okay. I'll tell you you don't belong at a party where you might be the only person who can't do something special with their words. Go ahead and tell me that's the truth, and we'll get back in the car. Daryl cleared his throat. They're not the same, B. The folks at Benny's already know you. Not before I met them. At Benny's. A stunned, reflective silence hung between them. Cicadas droned in the background. Muffled, fast-paced music flared up from the house just down from where they stood. When Daryl took a deep breath and finally met her gaze full on, she knew she'd hit a mark inside that quiet, calculating mind. Betty invited both of us that first time, and we were invited together to this thing, too. This isn't any different than one of those cookouts, got it? He studied her gaze and blinked slowly, like he still couldn't believe he'd better talk him into this. Except for the size of those houses. I mean, damn. That was it. That was all either of them needed to keep moving forward. Bernadette snorted and gave his arm a little tug as she moved down the sidewalk toward the White House. He hadn't completely relaxed, but his elbow had a little more give to it now, and she couldn't ask for anything more than that. She didn't have to. Without another word... They turned onto the cement walkway up to the house with navy blue trim, which is now clearly the source of the muted music on the other side of that navy blue door. Bernadette stared at the dark paint before reaching up to press the doorbell set in the brick wall, also painted white. A round of laughter bubbled up from inside the house. Then the doorknob turned, and the door opened. The woman on the other side of it looked everything and nothing like what Bernadette had expected. Skin the same light brown as the sunset reflecting off Folly Beach black hair falling in tight ringlets around her shoulders, shining eyes that wavered somewhere between hazel and amber. Her lips parted in a wide grin, and she glanced from Bernadette to Daryl and back again. Bernie? Hey, this is Daryl, yeah. Janice told me all about you. I'm Donna. She stuck out a hand toward Daryl first, who accepted the handshake and blinked quickly a few times. The corner of his mouth twitched up into an approving smile when Donna reached out for Bernadette's hand next and pulled her inside. Wait till we show her y'all actually showed up. I swear that woman's going to kill me with how much she worries about everything. Damn, though. It's good to finally have you up here with us, both of y'all. With her arm around Bernadette's shoulder, Donna turned back to shoot Daryl a crisp nod. He chuckled and dipped his head, and the only thing Bernadette could do was offer him a playful, just go with it shrug. Their hostess led them into a huge living room that looked like something straight out of House Beautiful, all neon colors and geometric patterns. Donna's arm slid across Bernadette's back before the woman raised both hands and clapped once. Listen up! Y'all aren't gonna believe who decided to finally come check out Vincent. Bernie and Daryl, y'all, all all the way from Charleston. It wasn't quite a cheer. More like at least 20 people all calling out to Bernadette and Daryl like they'd met before, and wasn't this the damnedest surprise? But it made her laugh all the same. She raised a hand, grinning, and all Daryl could do was jerk his head back in acknowledgement, failing to hide a surprised, disbelieving smile of his own. See? Bernadette bumped her shoulder against his arm and nodded toward the room and everyone in it who'd gone back to their previous conversations. Literally with open arms. Daryl finally took a hand out of his pocket and settled it on the small of her back, then leaned in to mutter, We'll see. As long as you don't go getting us into too much trouble. That's Catherine Hudson reading a sample chapter from her latest book, Sleepwater Static. Hey, the book is available right now, so click the link in the show notes for more about Catherine and all of her books. Don't forget to also click the link in the show notes for our podcast friends and sponsors alike. Make sure to send me an email or call. You know, don't forget that number is 660-851-1146. And hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out next time when I'm back with a brand new author, a new book, and an all-new sample check. Take care, everybody. Be kind to your neighbors. 
and we'll see you again real, real soon. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.